Welcome to this Arnold Culliford tutorial for modern daily knitting on knitting with let lopy yarn at a loose gauge. This tutorial is part of a series to accompany the patterns in MDK field guide number 17, Lopi. All of the patterns in this field guide have been designed by the amazing Mary Jane Mucklestone. Today's tutorial will show you the characteristics of the fabric required to knit the destination pullover from field guide 17. These tips are also relevant for the day tripper cardigan in the same field guide, as well as for the stopover pullover and cardigan patterns, which are also by Mary Jane Mucklestone. Let Lopi is an Icelandic 100% wool yarn. It's created with fleece from Icelandic sheep and Icelandic sheep have dual coats. And this contributes to the distinctive hairy appearance of Icelandic wool. Letlopi is woolen spun, which means that the fibres are jumbled when they're spun together. They're not combed so that they're all lying in the same direction. This creates a light and airy yarn that behaves as if it was a single ply, though in reality it is actually made from two plies, but they're all spun in the same direction. So it, it really does behave to all intents and purposes as a single ply yarn. As you'd expect from a single ply yarn, it doesn't give great stitch definition, but instead when it's washed and blocked, the fibers bloom beautifully and the results in stranded color work are absolutely stunning. This is the yoke of my stopover pullover by Mary Jane Mucklestone. And as you can see where the stranded color work has been done, the fibers have all bloomed when it's been washed and blocked and it makes this beautiful fabric. So let's talk about gauge and let lopi yarn. The recommended standard gauge for let lopi is 18 stitches and 24 rows to 10 centimeters or four inches. And this creates a really sturdy fabric that will wear brilliantly well. As you can see, the stitches are snug next to each other. And because of the way the fibers are spun, the jumbled fibers that poke up tend to stick out from the fabric a little bit more when let lopi is knitted at this standard gauge. And it's quite a rustic yarn. So when it's knitted at this gauge, if you're sensitive, you may well find that there's quite a, quite a prickle factor because the fibres are poking up between the stitches because there isn't anywhere else for them to go. So this is knitted at the standard gauge and then here I've increased needle sizes. So uh, for me, I knitted this one on a four and a half millimetre needle, this middle swatch on a five and a half millimetre needle and this one on a six and a half millimetre needle. And they're the same number of stitches and rows. So you can really see the difference in the fabrics. This was the recommended gauge. And then this is a size up. And this is at the gauge recommended for the destination pullover. And as you increase that needle size, the fabric becomes lighter and more airy. And because there are now spaces between the stitches, you can see little bits of light coming through the fabric there. Those jumbled fibers actually bloom out to fill those spaces. And so the surface of the fabric is less hairy than it was on the recommended gauge swatch. And so actually this looser gauge swatch feels significantly softer than the one that was knitted at the recommended gauge. It's a lighter area fabric and is going to be absolutely brilliant for making a sweater. Here's another photo of the destination pullover that is worked at this looser gauge in Let Lopi yarn. Now, when you're swatching for this project, obviously you need to bear in mind that the destination pullover is knitted in the round. And it's really important that you work your swatch in the same way as you're planning to work your sweater. So 
If you're planning to use, for example, a bamboo circular needle for your sweater, then it's important that when you swatch, you use a bamboo circular needle and you work your swatch in the round. One of the main reasons for this is that lots and lots of people find that their gauge between knitting and purling is different. So if you work a flat swatch, which I've done here so that you can see the swatch more clearly, if you work a flat swatch, it's half knits and half purls. Whereas when you work in the round, you're only working knit stitches, so your gauge can be different. So please make sure to swatch using the needles that you plan to use for the finished project. The other thing to note when you're swatching is that unless you're planning to never ever wash your pullover, you need to know what your washed and blocked gauge is going to be. So what you need to do is you knit a swatch. Here's a month that I've got on the needles at the moment. And you can maybe see that the stitches are a little uneven and it's a little bit, I don't know, a little bit less neat. This swatch here has been washed as I plan to wash my final sweater. So I soak it in lukewarm water with a little bit of no rinse wool wash. And then I squeeze, carefully squeeze out as much water as I can. I don't twist it, just squeeze it between your hands. And then I simply laid the swatch nice and flat to dry, just making sure that it was the right width at the top and the bottom. And I just patted it down with my fingers. There's no need to stretch your swatch when you're drying it because you, you wouldn't stretch a sweater when you leave it to dry. So you're just treating it the same way as you will your finished project. And hopefully you can see that the fabric of the washed and blocked swatch is that bit more even than the one that's on my needles. And actually I found that my gauge did change a little bit between my on the needles gauge and my washed and blocked gauge and of course it's this one that determines the size of your final project so the washed and blocked gauge is the most important one because that's how big your sweater is going to be once you've washed it um, some people don't find that their gauge changes significantly but i found that that mine did so just uh, make sure that you take the time to knit your swatch as you will knit your sweater and then wash it and dry it the same way as you will your sweater to check that you're getting the right number of stitches and rounds to 10 centimeters or four inches. I'm just going to finish off with showing you a little bit of knitting on my loose gauge Let Lopey project, just to give you a feel for it. I'm really not doing anything special. I'm getting the loose gauge by having chosen larger needles and just I know it can be a bit counterintuitive but don't be put off by the fact that that fabric looks really holy and perhaps a bit uneven and not particularly neat it really is the magic of blocking that these um, woolen spun fibers will just all relax out to fill in those gaps and settle down and make a lovely smooth finished fabric. So do just enjoy working with Lopi at a looser gauge. It makes a lovely light sweater that you'll get lots of wear from. I hope that's given you loads of confidence knitting with Let Lopi at this looser gauge of 13 stitches and 18 rounds to 10 centimeters or four inches. Understanding how your yarn will work at different gauges is a really helpful skill to have in your knitting toolbox and it will make you more confident at yarn substitutions among other things. We have lots more tutorials, hints and tips over on our website. Do click the link up here to head over and visit and explore. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you're sure not to miss our next video tutorial. Thanks ever so much for watching. Bye-bye.